and about being physically present and then later just being sloppy. Um, I'm trying a new setup. I'm in a different place. So let me know if you see any issues with the stream quality and my Wi-Fi instead of plugging right into my router and my Xbox Live stream. Uh, let me know if the audio is okay. a few things a little differently today, including Slack and um, Twitch chat, so you may have heard some things that I said that you didn't hear, you didn't hear maybe, so I'll give, I'll give people some room if you don't mind if I don't hear anything, and then we'll uh, get to some discussion, so I guess if everyone wants to be an all in, um, you probably saw the decision to postpone commencement of the fall semester. Let me try to turn that up. So I just, yeah, I had it turned way down, it looks like. So, <laughs> okay, uh, let me know if it's better now. Uh, I can see you all. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Um, I was experimenting with uh, how to do the playback for um, the, because uh, I want to I wanna play some segments from the Mike Daisy thing. And let me close that so it's not showing up twice. So um, I wanted I was experimenting with the audio, so I think it's hopefully okay now. And hopefully it won't be too weird whenever I play the audio from the podcast. So yeah. Um, anyway, I was just saying like the the decision to postpone commencement makes a lot of sense to move to that move that to the fall. Um, you know, something that obviously details yet to be worked out, but I think that's the right decision. Um, certainly feasible logistically in terms of planning. Um, so, you know, we already kind of know how to run a commencement at UMW, so uh, it makes sense just to change the dates for that, I think. So that's that's a good idea. Um, also, it's just kind of nice to look forward to something like that. You know, right now everything seems so uncertain that like thinking ahead to something positive like that's a good thing. Um, at least it's helping me mentally, so uh, hopefully that's good for you all as well. Um, so today, the main thing I wanted to do different today is have more of a real-time conversation using Slack. So last time I posted questions ahead of time, and then many of you re replied in like you know rich long paragraphs. Um, so okay, Tess, are you okay? You okay? You looks like Tess is okay now. Um, so I, instead of doing that this time, I thought I would pose a question and I'll type it in Slack, uh, but also say it and then let you respond in Slack. Um, you know, just one question at a time, basically, and then kind of follow those wherever they go. That's the that's the purpose. And then later, I'll post a version of those discussion questions in your Canvas groups in case you want to respond to it later, or in case you're not watching the stream live, so you can um, respond to those later as a asynchronous kind of participation. Um, so uh, the thing we're still working on and thinking about the fabrication, material fabrication phase of a product's life cycle. And so we've been learning about that by listening to uh, a couple of podcasts or reading one, listening to the other, and had a couple of questions I still wanted to investigate with these. So um, I, I wanted to put them out here for you. Um, let me see. So there's, there's one moment in particular that I was interested in, and I didn't see if anyone mentioned this moment in your, your notes in Slack. So uh, I thought I'd play it for you and then then ask you to respond to it. So this is the moment, and I'm, I didn't test the volume at this particular setting, so hopefully this isn't super loud or weird, but let's try it. But instead, okay. you lied further and okay. you Back stole. up a little bit. What does yeah. that mean? Unpack the complexity. Well, it means, it means that, you know, just like, like the hex thing. Okay, so can, that's the audio from the podcast. Can you hear that okay, or is it super loud or super weird? Uh, let me know if there's like a feedback or anything. I don't think I tested earlier and I didn't think there was, but then I changed the settings. So let me know how how did that sound? Thing. I mean, I think I'm agreeing with you. I mean, with the heck saying. Okay. Great. We approached you and asked you specifically about that. There's an email that that Brian sent you about the heck saying. He he wrote Apple's 2011 report. This is their responsibility report. Acknowledges the hexane problem at two plants, one at WinTech and another at a logo supplier, but not at Foxconn. 
these workers you were talking to in the monologue, were they from Foxconn, do you remember, or from other plants? And, and at that point, you could have come back to us and said, oh, no, no, I didn't meet these workers. You know, this is just something that I inserted in the monologue based on things I had read and things I had heard in Hong Kong. Um, but instead, you lied further and you said, you wrote, the workers were from WinTech, not Foxconn. Why not just tell us what really happened at that point? I think I was terrified. Okay, so that was the moment. Um, I was. I have a clock in this room, so I was counting the ticks. Uh, the moment being the silence there. So I talked a little bit about the the modality of audio and the way that this gets delivered as a podcast changes part of its effect. And that's, to me, the really key moment here that, that conveys that. So um, did you count how long that was? It was? I counted 13 seconds of silence. Um, what does that silence do to you as a listener? What does it make you go through as a listener? Uh, that's the, the question I want to pose here in Slack and then ask you all to discuss a bit. Um, Great, so I suppose that in Slack it looks like several of you are typing too, so that's good. So we'll see what you have to say there. And um, Okay, yeah, Maddie. so um, it does sound like he's trying to come up with a lie, right? Like he's kind of come, trying to come up with something. Like he's trying to save face or trying to come up with something. Um, Yeah, I'll give you all a minute to, to type your thoughts out. Yeah, interesting. So, so, <laughs> yeah, interesting. So, it looks like, so Emily and Crystal are both noticing, like, you're thinking about Mike Daisy's in this, and then Matt is actually thinking about the question that Ira Glass poses, which is interesting too. Um, yeah, yeah. And so good. So somebody just thumbs up, use the thumbs up thing. That's a way to kind of keep that conversation kind of real time. Um, but like uh, now that sort of the, the conversation has moved on a little bit, I'm going to add, at, I'm going to respond to Matt's question. Uh, if I can get the right Matt here. Lots of Matt's. Um, Does it, I'm just curious if, um, uh, so what does it make you think about the question? Like, how does it go back to the question and, and lead you to think of it? Do you, I, I'll, I'll play it again just for, you know, why not? Um, not Foxconn. In the monologue, were they from Foxconn? I had read and things I had heard in Hong Kong. Okay. Um, but instead, you lied further and you said, you wrote, the workers were from WinTech, not Foxconn. Why not just tell us what really happened at that point? Yeah, so that's the question. Why not just really, why not tell us what really happened? And he has, like, he's changing his story, basically, and trying to say, well, it was actually this. And, like, that, that's the, um, the, the way he's still trying to dissemble and, and trying to, you know, um, respond. Um, but uh, at this point, this is to me the point where Mike Daisy is really caught. Like this is really the moment where he he is stuck, right? Um, and so it looks like yeah, both Olivia and uh, and Crystal are noting how like the pause itself really just kind of even before he answers sets you up to expect him to lie further or do something like that. Yeah. It is, and it is very theatrical, so that's a good point, Maddie. Like, he's thinking, um, what's the word? Histrionically, is that the right word for that? Like, he's thinking of, how, like, what would make the most dramatic thing. Um, and what I think is interesting about the way he's doing that is, well, I think, well, I'll get to it in a minute, but there's something, um, th this is good, yeah, he's, he's thinking about the suspense. So, um... 
Yeah, good stuff. Okay, so uh, kind of the follow-up question. So can you all think of other instances of silence in media that had similar or different effects? Yeah, uh, moments of, like, I mean, obviously there's silent film, so I'm not talking about that necessarily, but like moments where there was something uh, in, a, in a movie, in audio, or something where there was just dead air, just dead silence, and um, what effect did it have whenever you experienced that? And by the way, if you want to respond to someone else, like if you want to go back into a thread, you can do the at thing like I did at Matthew Simmons right there. Or if you wanted to um, respond to, let's say, Gentry's post right here, you can click on this start a thread thing and then just reply directly to that and carry that conversation going on, um, down further. Those can get lost a little bit, so I don't do them all the time, but it's something that if you want to do, you certainly can. So other instances of silence in media that you can think of. And I'll let you type for a minute. By the way, I'm sitting in my son room. We call it the school room because it's where my kids do most of their school stuff, but they haven't been during the winter because it gets cold in here. Uh, but it's a nice day, so I'm sitting up here. Oh, that's a squirrel. Hey, get out of there. Get out of there. <laughs> Sorry. There's a squirrel. Uh, I, we have a bird feeder, and like we, we put up this like bowl thing on top of it to keep squirrels from getting into it, and it uh, does not seem to work. They figured out how to get around the bowl. And there's one squirrel in particular, I think this might be it, that acts really weird on the ground like it hops around and flops around on the ground like um i don't know if it's just having fun or if it's like angry or something but it's i think this might be it we've, we've nicknamed it popcorn so yeah i think that's popcorn i don't know <laughs> sorry about that let me know if you see a squirrel on that let me know so i can yell at it again Anyway, okay, so uh, horror movies, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting example. Um, uh, yeah, so Tess, I think, um, yeah, that was not the rest. too many Tesses, <laughs> just two. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, you also, though, in horror movies, I think you often hear like a single violin. Um, That's interesting because Crystal, I haven't, I haven't listened to a lot of Elon Musk um, interviews or whatever, so um, that's interesting that you've you noticed that he does that. Um, but I'm sure you're right that he's trying to think of, a, you know, a response. He has to be careful in what he says because people will, will pay attention to it. Um, <laughs> does moving? <laughs> seems like the squirrels are going to find their bird feeder wherever you move it, right? Um, we have a couple more in the front yard that are not visited as much, but I think it's because of the seed that we got for that is actually had gone bad. So they no, like birds aren't eating it either. Um, this, this bird feeder doesn't have any bird seed in it anymore, actually, because it's like <laughs> fell apart, <laughs> um, from squirrels. Uh, so maybe another thing. Um, so are, are there different kinds of silence? Like I'm thinking, I'm, I'm blanking on examples, of course, but uh, I'm trying to think of uh, moments in film where there's no uh, there's no uh, non-diegetic music. Um, so people talking, but there's no music, right? I mean, or like just the sound of someone walking through a house or something. I can imagine that being very tense. Um, music in cinema does a lot to tell us how to feel about a scene and so if it's taken away sometimes that can leave us unsettled and, and nervous and that can definitely be used dramatically right 
Oh, that's interesting too. So Meredith, that's a really good example. Um, yeah, so... I mean, it's not the kind of thing I was thinking, but that's really interesting. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, Because, um, of course, you have to have a following or some interest to begin with in order to make for the silence to build up anticipation or the lack of posting to build up anticipation. Um, you know, so there's sort of a balance, right? Like, if you're not interesting enough, people won't care either way. <laughs> but if you're interesting, people will try to listen. And uh, if you're not saying anything, then that will kind of build up the anticipation. Uh, there's an author I, I really like who I used to try to learn more about, and he had very, very little social media social media presence um, and so I was really like eager to hear more and I was always trying to stalk his different pages to figure out if something new was coming out from him and um, he yeah eventually now he's much more prolific and, and posts a lot and I'm like I'm less interested <laughs> so I don't know if it's just because I've, I've sort of moved beyond my interest in his books or because he's putting that a lot more out there now um, it's kind of kind of interesting um, well, the, so one I, w I was thinking of, uh, like a specific example, was like um, in the not the most recent Star Wars movie, but the one before. Uh, do you remember that one? There was uh, I, I probably could find the clip if, if, or if, if one of you can find the clip and post it in Slack, that'd be great if, um, if you know what I'm talking about. But there's a moment where something really dramatic happens, and then there's just dead silence, and it's only like three or four seconds, I think. Um, but I remember when I saw it in theaters, they had like flyers up saying. You know, by the way, there is a moment of silence that occurs in this movie. It's not an error in the audio. <laughs> so uh, I guess it was kind of responding to people who apparently uh, didn't understand that that was intentional and were asking about it or complaining about it. Um, and it definitely is a it's a really dramatic moment in the movie. And I think the silence underscores the drama of that moment really well. I think that's um, I mean, it's a movie with it's kind of uneven in some ways, but I think of the. I guess there's a sequel trilogy now. I think that one might be my favorite. The, the, so episode eight. Um, and, part of, and a big part of that is for moments like that. I just think, I think the cinematography was a lot better um, for that. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. I mean, silence. Um, any other examples of silence you can think of, like in media? Um, there's a famous example in, in music composition where the composer John Cage produced a composer work called Four Minutes and 33 Seconds, or Four Four Thirty Three. And it's performed different ways, actually, but it is scored as four minutes and 33 seconds of, you know, silence. Uh, but what that performance reveals, if you ever get to see it, is actually that it's not silent. It's not, it's just the absence of piano music. And so whatever you hear in that moment, if you get to see it performed, is all the sounds of people in the audience shuffling around or coughing or laughing nervously, or maybe the tr a train goes by, something like that. Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, that's an interesting example, too. So I'm just noting how sometimes it can be um, indicating a lack of, of um, he like a hearing loss, right? So maybe like a like a grenade goes off or something. Often you hear kind of that ee -ee sound to indicate like the tinnitus feeling. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. So, uh, Parasite. Okay, I, I haven't seen Parasite yet. I, I understand that's quite good, but... Um, uh, that's something that I I'd be interested in seeing. So, let's see if I can respond. I had a thought about invoice point here. Um, oh, great. Yeah, thanks, Rachel. I'll pull that up in a second here. Like, so I don't know, this is kind of an off-the-cuff observation, but it seems like all these moments kind of, like what a lot of these have in common is sort of anchoring your point of view in someone's subjectivity, in someone else's point of view, right? So this is, uh, like in, like I haven't seen Parasite, so I don't know how it works there, but like in Emily's example, um, 
it, you know, showing hear, hearing loss, like a particular character has experienced this concussion grenade or whatever it is. We haven't in the audience, but we hear the sound of what they would be hearing or not hearing. And so we hear the silence as their lack of hearing. And so we're kind of connected to their point of view in that moment. Um, I think something similar actually kind of happens with Mike Daisy's piece, and I'll show you why in a moment. Uh, but let me see, let's see if I can play this here. Let's make this big. <laughs> I hope this is right Spoiler alert, by the way, I guess if you haven't seen this movie, this is a mo major moment in this movie, so it's about to be spoiled, I guess. fire on the transports. Oh my god. She's running away. Oh, she is. Yeah, that's just a cool moment. I think it's done really well. Um, but the, the uh, you know, of course, there is no sound in space anyway because there's no air for the, the vibrations to go through. But, um, you know, it, uh, we expect sound in space, so uh, especially in Star Wars. So that's something that, that silence really drives home. And so we understand, uh, I guess, that, you know, I mean, the, all the tension in that scene, but... Um, the uh, the particular the sacrifice of Admiral Holdo is there is pretty um, significant. So anyway, pretty cool. Um, yeah, thanks for for sharing that, uh, Rachel. Um, so let's listen to this again and see if you can notice how this moment here brings us into a similar kind of subjectivity or a sense of someone's point of view. Just tell us what really happened at that point. I think I was terrified. Of what? So notice how, so Mike Daisy is, as many of you pointed out, kind of thinking about, maybe he's thinking of a lie, or maybe he's trying to figure out how to respond in a way that saves face without being too embarrassing. But um, notice what his response does. He actually says, uh, I think I was terrified. And it suddenly becomes, he turns the story around to be about him now. It's not a question about, the story is no longer talking about the story, no longer talking about China manufacturers. Suddenly, this is about um, the, this is about Mike Daisy and his terror. That's what we, he wants us to be interested in. Sassy, Sassy, the bunny just ran by. Sassy, hey, the bunny just ran by. Go see if he's out there. There's a bunny that just ran by. We got to pay attention for things like that. Um, but you know, again, silence is, of course, not really silence. Like I don't know if you could hear birds singing whenever I was playing this clip, but that's something that becomes part of your experience at that moment as well, and you're kind of connecting in here. Uh, so anyway, so that's yeah. I mean, I just, mainly I wanted you to notice how silence worked there. The silence is something that I've um, experimented with a little bit um, creatively, I guess. The I, I mentioned Philip Glass's four minutes thirty three seconds. So um, there is. This is a little weird. I'll go ahead and tell you. This is something I did a while ago, um, where if you so you probably know what a supercut is. It's where you take some video, some longer thing, and then you make a supercut that's like all of a particular phrase in that cut. Um, you see, like uh, 
Jimmy Fallon does these a lot. Uh, and um, there's ways you can do that so programmatically in software. And so that's um, what I did. Um, actually, this one, though, that you see on the screen here, this was one I did manually. Um, but there's software you can do that super cuts with now. And that's what I did to make this one. Um, but what I did is this was a, a uh, journal where they did a call for creative, critical, critically creative works. And so they had uh, William S. Burroughs, who's a writer, and they had this, this particular lecture he gave. And they prompt, the prompt was to remix it in some way. And so I remixed it by cutting out, editing out everything that was not, everything that was words. So all that's left is the background noise and shuffling papers and him breathing sometimes. So it's a kind of silence, but not really. Um, you may not be able to hear it, and that's kind of kind of the point, but what you do hear, what little you do hear, is interesting because it connects you to kind of to the physical presence of William S. Burroughs in a way that, that hearing his words might not. So you can hear him breathing. I mean, basically what I did, again, is I, I every time he speaks, I, I edited that out. And so what's left is the, the moments between speech. And it, it sounds creepy. Like, it sounds tense and uh, weird. Um, I did something similar, and this is, I think, even more weird. Um, this is one of the debates from the 2016 election, and I edited out all, this, all of the words. So all we have left is just breathing. And um, this one I did in software, so it's much faster cuts, right? You have the video to go with it, too. Um, it's a very, again, uncomfortable thing to watch because <laughs> it feels like hyperventilating. It kind of creates this feeling of constant tension. Really kind of not, not fun, but, but interesting, maybe, and weird. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that silence can be really productive uh, in media, and it's something that we, we can't really replicate in text quite as well. Like, if you look at the transcript for this moment, here's what it was. Why, did you, why not just tell us what really happened at that point? Long pause. Um, I think I was terrified. Breathing. Of what? Long pause. So it's it, we can see and intellectually know that there's a long pause there, but if we, uh, that's very different from hearing it and experiencing it emotionally, personally, physically, and that's something that that again is unique to the audio modality. Uh, okay, so if I had some more discussion questions. So um, so given that we have some reasons to doubt Mike Daisy's story. Uh, what can we say for sure about what's really going? Can't type on at Foxconn and tech, etc. So what do we know about what's actually going on? Uh, the this particular piece ends with that conversation, like this this uh, podcast episode um, interviews actual journalists working in that area, and they give some updates and some clarity. Uh, but it's been a few years now since this happens, right? So this is something that uh, I think we can do some more digging into and see if we can find out more about it. So here's what I'd like for you to try to do. So this is. Uh, by now, you hopefully have decided what object you're going to work on for Digital Archaeology Plan B. So take a minute and see if you can figure out a couple of things about that object. So uh, if you can find the manufacturer, like if it's a smartphone, like this is kind of easy. So I have a Samsung smartphone. Um, so if you have a Samsung, if you have an Apple, um, those are probably going to be easy. What I'd like for you to do is, is find out, uh, see if you can find a transparency report from that manufacturer that talks about what their labor issues are or what their labor rights are or whatever they're doing. Um, and I, I'm gonna, I haven't found it recently, so I'm going to go ahead and look for the Samsung one. But I'd like for you to do the same for whatever your device's manufacturer is, if you, you know, again, if you already decided. And uh, once you find it, share the link in Slack so we can compare them. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we can find. Um, these things do get updated every year, so like literally I'm just going to start Googling Samsung. See what they've got on their website. Samsung is a huge company. They do all kinds of things. So let's see. Sometimes it'll be under their business area. Nope, that's a different product line.
I don't know, so I'm not seeing an obvious place on their website to look for this. Let's look down here. So this is transparency in their investing, which is important. So let's see. Yeah, maybe something like that. Daniel, can you do that somewhere else? That's kind of distracting. What? That's kind of distracting to me. Can you do that somewhere else? Somebody, go, can you take that upstairs? <laughs> thanks. Oh, thanks, Matt. So Matt's found the one for apples. That's good. Um, okay, so... Oh, nice. Okay, so here's... I did. This is the page for Samsung, too, I think. Um, at least this is a general thing about what, they, what they're saying. So... That's that. Um, so... So this is a web page, not a PDF, but it probably has. Well, I mean, these are policies. These are so this is good. I mean, um, I was looking more for a report than a policy, but this is probably something. Oh, this is. Huh, okay, this is interesting. This seems to be about a particular health initiative in Vietnam called Her Her Health, Her Health, Her Finance. So interesting. Um, well, yeah, there's there's a few more things to dig in here, but the basic thing you can see is that they do have a, a policy on child labor, juvenile workers, and student workers. Um, I assume child labor prohibition policy just means that child labor is prohibited. Um, but let's see about the juvenile worker one. That seems a little bit more interesting. Um, okay, so they have rights to work and rights at work. Uh, juvenile worker is uh, 16 and 18, between 16 and 18. Um, and this is, this is specific to China, I've noticed, and it's also... Um, from 2014, so this is a bit dated. Um, so there are certain kinds of work that juvenile workers, so ages 16 to 18, are not allowed to do. And I guess, you know, 16 is an okay time to have a job, I guess. Um, this is very short, actually, not a, not a super detailed one. So they have a suggestion box and a hotline, <laughs> so. Okay, that's fine. I mean, that that's that's a reasonable policy. I guess the the real what really tests something like this is a report to see if they're actually following it or if they can track improvement or decline in that area. So that's the kind of thing that that I'm really interested in looking for, uh, and, and it takes a bit more looking. Uh, so it, yeah, so Matthew's found the one for Apple, so that's good. Um, there, there of course are more manufacturers out there, and they may be harder to find these things. Maybe harder to find some of the, the, these things for them. So if you can't do it right now, that's okay. You can do it later, and then post it in uh, Canvas. So um, here's uh, oh, so Olivia just or no, uh, Curry just pointed out. Or no, I don't know when she just pointed out, but I just saw her note in the uh, Twitch stream that another kind of silence is uh, ASMR. Um, that's something that. Um, kind of gets done accidentally um, as I'm sort of pausing to type, for example. Uh, but that, that's definitely an interesting category of silence or quietness, certainly, but a lot of times those are essentially silent where someone's not speaking and they're just typing or clicking something and making those kinds of sounds. So that, yeah, that's another interesting kind of thing. And again, I, th I think the link there for the ASMR kind of videos is a connection to subjectivity because you kind of imagine, like if you have the headphones on, the stereo headphones on, you listen to someone typing, I guess the idea is you feel like you're right there with them. 
Um, I haven't listened to a lot of ASMR, so um, I don't do it myself. But if you do, then maybe that's something you can comment on if you, um, if that's a reason you like it, if it has a feeling of connection or intimacy, I guess. I don't know. I, I really don't understand. I mean, I do kind of understand the appeal, but I don't desire it, I guess. I don't seek it out, so it's something that I have a hard time explaining, maybe. Um, and, and some people might not be familiar with ASMR. I forget what it stands for off the top of my head, but it's it's videos where people are doing making sounds very quietly, and listeners typically have high-quality headphones, and they listen to those sounds, and they enjoy it. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. Um, but if you have any thoughts on ASMR, if you're if you're a fan, then uh, you can certainly comment on that. Um, okay, so I think so. We've been going. I've been going about thirty minutes, so I'm going to wrap it up pretty soon. Uh, so what I'm going to do is post a a version of the conversation that I just organized in Slack in your Canvas groups, so that you can continue those, and uh, especially if you need to keep looking for a little while to find your uh, your device's supplier information or, or whatever it is like if it's Apple if it's not Apple or Samsung um, and so you can do that in there and also in case you're not able to view this live you can have that conversation there um, within those I'm putting those into your canvas group homepage discussions so whenever you post a response there think of not just me as the audience or the whole class but each other like you're in small groups five or six people uh, four or five or six people uh, so think of, I mean, the point is I really want you kind of connecting with each other. Um, while we're all separated like this, I think it's important to try to find communities like that. And a smaller group is a bit easier to connect, especially if you're talking asynchronously. Uh, so that's something that I would like for you to do in those groups to reply there. Um, and uh, see if you, yeah, you know, see if, see if you have any, any other things to add. Uh, on Monday, we're going to, I'll send you an announcement on Monday with a link to a, a video to watch. And some instructions. Um, so we remember we were interested in not just learning about content, but thinking about modalities here. So we've been we looked at uh, video games, we've um, read some narrative, we've looked at we've listened to audio. We're going to look at film or video next, and so that'll be our final modality that we look at in this. So I'll send you a video. It's a YouTube video, and then um, with the instruction to kind of start with that video and then kind of see where the algorithm takes you next and see what else you can find about it. We're going to be talking in, and learning about the recycling phase of electronics, and so that's going to be one video to start us off. And then they'll, after we've explored some th thoughts around that video, there'll be a second uh, film that I, I want you all to watch and respond to. So let's see. In Twitch, a couple of people are chiming in about ASMR. Yeah, Olivia and I, I, I Olivia, I kind of agree. It does kind of creep me out a little bit. Um, I, I think it's also so easy to make fun of or like to parody it that sometimes I watch parodies of it for fun but it's just um I don't know it's interesting there was one I saw I can't remember where I saw it but it was an ASM it started off as an ASMR video but then it turns into an alien invasion video but it continues uh, like ASMR style like super quiet uh, but fighting off um, xenomorphs uh, pretty interesting <laughs> so, uh, if anyone knows what I'm talking about share that in Slack I guess uh, okay so the other thing what else was I going to say to wrap things up yeah, so I'll send an announcement with those links, and then I'll post another version of this in there. Um, I also I put a thought, uh, sorry, in the homepage for Canvas. Let me show you. I put the put a couple things. So let me get in here. Uh, so here, I just put the links right at the top to the Plan B FAQ and to the assignment checklist. I'll probably keep updating these a little bit, uh, the FAQ uh, a little bit. Uh, but I put those links right at the top of the homepage for our site so you can find them easily. Um, and obviously, I'm going to go through and grade things and respond to things in Slack, as you can see over here on the right. Uh, not in Slack. I'll, I'll reply sometimes in Slack, but I'll go through in Canvas and work my way through it. Um, I, you know... To be honest, I go back and forth between like enjoying being immersed in, in work stuff, like grading and, and emailing, and also I experience, I've noticed that my just general anxiety increases the more time I, I spend in front of a screen. So I'm, I sometimes I have to ration that a little bit. So I may not be able to be as productive as I'd like to be in terms of getting on, um, you know, online and talking to you all. Uh, through the text means, text methods here, but uh, I certainly will keep streaming and, and do what I can. Um, but I, I may be taking like a information isolation this weekend, at least tomorrow. I just, I, you know, it, it, it gets to be too much sometimes. And so I might need to take a break and disconnect a bit uh, in case you need to reach out. I might not be able to respond until Sunday or Monday. 
So uh, just a heads up there. Um, but anyway, um, thanks for joining the discussion. I thought it was fun to have a, a more live chat in Slack. So uh, we'll probably try to do that again uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday next week uh, with some different topics and activities. So thanks for tuning in. I'm going to be shutting it down here in a moment. So um, I'll upload this to YouTube later and you can watch it later. Or, you know, if you are watching it later, then thanks for watching it later. Uh, let me know if you have any questions with anything. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you later. Um, have a good weekend. If I don't see you again, I'll see you on Monday. Okay, bye. Okay, how do I stop? Here we go.